Fiscal policy consists of the government action of taxation and government spending. This is done to increase or decrease the aggregate demand so as to achieve the macro objective of government. Characteristics of good taxation policy A good taxation policy should have the policy 1. Equity The amount of tax the people and firms have to pay should be based on their ability to pay. A rich person has a greater ability to pay tax than a poor person. 2. Certainty A tax should be easy to understand. 3. Convenience A tax should be easy to pay. 4. Economical The cost of collecting a tax should be less than the revenue it generates. 5. Flexible it should be possible to change the tax if economic activity changes or government aims change. 6. Efficiency. A tax should improve the performance of markets, or at least not reduce the efficiency of markets. Regressive and Progressive Taxation. Regressive tax is a tax whereby the percentage paid in tax falls as income or wealth rises. Example of such taxes are GST and value-added tax. Progressive tax is a tax whereby the percentage of the tax rises as income or wealth rises. Examples of such taxes are income tax and property tax. Direct tax, a tax that is taken directly from income, profits and wealth. The amount of tax is paid directly by the consumer or the firms to the government. Advantages of direct tax. 1. Redistribution of income and wealth from the higher income to the lower income. 2. Good source of tax revenue for the government to undertake spending like schools and hospital for its people. Disadvantages of direct tax. 1. Too high a tax can cause people to try to evade taxation. 2. The higher the tax the less firms have in after tax profits to invest in capital and education of its workers. 3. Too high a tax rate will affect the ability to work and motivation level of workers will fall. Indirect tax is a tax paid by consumers when they buy goods and service. The government makes the producer responsible for the tax. Producers may then increase the price of the good to pass on the tax to consumers. Advantages of indirect tax 1. Easy and cheap to collect. 2. A wide tax space. Anyone who buys goods and services will pay some indirect taxes. 3. Can be used selectively to achieve aims like reduce consumption of alcohol or any demerit goods. 4. Harder to evade and easier to adjust. 5. Useful source of income in countries where it is difficult to raise income tax. Disadvantages of indirect tax. 1. Are aggressive and fall proportionately more heavily on the poor. 2. Increased indirect taxes increase prices of goods and services. 3. Can lead to workers asking for wage increases. Thus costs of production would increase so inflation can occur. 4. Tax revenues are less certain because they depend on spending patterns. The incidence of tax is the proportion of tax that both producer and consumer are each responsible to pay for each good or service being taxed. With inelastic demand, the producers are able to increase the price of their product without much change in the quantity demanded. This increase in price would make the consumers pay a higher proportion of the indirect tax as seen from the diagram. Note that government tax revenue is equal to consumer tax, in pink, plus producer tax, in blue. 
The red arrow between S and S1 shows the per unit amount of the indirect tax. If a good is elastic in demand, the producers cannot increase the price of their product without the quantity demanded increasing a lot resulting in receiving less total revenues than before the price increase. Therefore the producers must pay for a greater amount of the tax by themselves if the indirect tax rate increases. Government spending is another fiscal policy tool. Most government spending is on infrastructure like roads, airports or on schools and hospitals. By spending some amounts of money, the government encourage firms to increase their production to meet increased demand for goods and services. Firms will have to buy more capital or hire more labor. Labor will get more income and they will generate more spending. This spending increase will cause economic growth and give rise to greater employment. Expansionary fiscal policy involves increasing or decreasing expenditure and or increasing or decreasing taxation. This is undertaken to help government meet its macro objectives of increasing economic growth lowering unemployment and inflation and improve on its balance of payment. Purpose of Expansionary Fiscal Policy 1. Economic Growth Firms are able to invest more and to produce more due to paying less tax. 2. Full Employment More jobs available due to increased business activity wanting labor. 3 falling price level or deflation. During a recession falling price level means the economy is contracting and as such the government will want people to have more income to spend by increasing government spending. However, 4. Balance of payments may suffer. If the BOP has been in state of deficit for a long time, lower taxes may encourage consumers to buy more imports and the balance of payment will worsen. 5. Redistribution of income. Government spending may benefit the higher income more like spending on airports and sporting facilities instead on spending on supporting the lower income. This will wide income inequality. Contractionary or deflationary fiscal policy involves decreasing expenditure and or increasing taxation so as to help the government meet its macroeconomic objectives. Contractionary or deflationary fiscal policy involves decreasing expenditure and or increasing taxation so as to help the government meet its macroeconomic objectives of lowering inflation and to reduce the balance of payment deficit through the current account. Increasing taxes will lower the aggregate demand and bring the general price level lower and inflation lower in the country. With lower inflation, the cost of production will be lower and the country's exports will be more competitive and this can improve on the balance of payment through the current account.